I am uh, Benjamin Bloemendal. I have uh, been working with Facoma for about eight years now. I work as uh, what we call a concept engineer, uh, which basically means track design, creating the new roller coasters, uh, because we are a roller coaster manufacturer. When you design a roller coaster, it's not about completely focusing on what is the, the best experience to ride, but there's a lot of different disciplines and a lot of different um, requirements that different projects may meet. Some project schedule is very important, otherwise it might be budget or creative intent. So there's not a single answer I can give you, so how do I approach a roller coaster design? It highly depends on the customer and what its needs are. What is, in your opinion, a really good uh, mix and set of forces and elements on the roller coaster? So what I like to do when I get the freedom to design is, is to, to get as many surprises in there as possible. So it might not just be the type of elements or the forces even, it can also be change of horizon or making sure that you do something that comes at the rider so fast they haven't been able to anticipate what they're going to feel or going to see. So this can be applied to a family coaster or a thrill coaster, doesn't matter. You try to keep the, the, the riders guessing for what's coming next. Well, maybe a recent example that you may know is uh, the left coaster in Poland, which is a, a very compact high energy design. And um, the key there was to, to keep a small footprint, but still get some big numbers out of that ride. Um, and what we did there was not just focus on idle loops or airtime hills or rolls or something like this, but trying to create an, an, an exciting mix so that every element that follows the previous one feels slightly different or is unexpected in a way. How do you get the ideas for such a crazy element? Mm. Sometimes um, it's riding other roller coasters. I mean, I'm a roller coaster fan myself as well, so I, I, I've been fortunate enough to travel around and ride a few rides. So sometimes it's another roller coaster that inspires me and I try to do something similar, but with my own twist. Or it can be something completely different. Um, it might be something I see on TV, like an air show or something like this. And you see, see people fly airplanes and do all kinds of maneuvers that we haven't seen before on the coaster. And I try to find out what that would feel like and look like. Because it's not just the force, it's not the ride by itself only, but the, the whole thing has to look imposing or, or interesting as well. How much fine-tuning is required to, to um, get the actual final layout? That also comes down to the type of project. Some projects go from the very first concept to uh, the final layout that we can lock and that we've checked on all different disciplines, maybe within two, two and a half weeks. But there are also projects that take many months. So it highly depends on the complexity of the ride and also how involved the customer actually is in the details of the design. So some coasters have, for instance, show integrated. And that's when there's a lot more iteration on details than, for instance, rides that I have a lot more freedom to design myself. We don't, we don't design rides as standard rides. We don't define them as this is going to be a standard ride and the other one is not. Um, so when we do a new design uh, and someone else has maybe written that design or, or seen it somewhere and he says, I need something like that, but my schedule is very short, very tight, there might not be time to do a custom design for this customer. And also budget might be a reason because if you have gone through that many percent of the engineering process, all the drawings are ready, you can go to shop early and cost may be reduced. So those are two, two arguments to go with existing designs. And would you say how much involvement uh, parks have in uh, your design? How much feedback do they provide to you in the creative process of well, making a roller coaster? Some of them, uh, a lot. So some customers, they give me a sketch and they say, can you do something like this? And I turn it into what I feel looks like um, what the customer presented to me, um, but also try to interpret the thoughts behind it, what he's trying to achieve with the ride, what the actual uh, target group is for this, this attraction. Um, some customers are, are less involved like that, others are maybe even more involved. Sometimes uh, we meet customers, and this is also a lot of fun to work with because you get appreciation for the less detail in, in your layout. That will talk to you about every single turn and can you tweak it like this, can you maybe make it a little more like that. So people have their own ideas and you try to find out what they're looking for exactly and turn it into the best design. What you've seen with uh, the sit-down drill coaster recently is something we, we brought back, actually brought back from many years, uh, many years ago, the Arrow Age or the old Facoma Age if you will, by completely redesigning and redefining our sit-down drill coaster train uh, and along with that the, the designs that we're doing. 
uh, you will see something similar like that for our suspended coaster as well. So we're developing a completely new suspended thrill coaster as we call it. And you'll see something similar with the layout design as well, trying to get more different elements and a mix of sensations. We're defending the new uh, suspended thrill coaster vehicles. So you'll see the first model before the decade is out. I also wanted to ask you to talk us through the experience of your new release models, like the Shockwave and the Top Gun. Can you describe to us the ride experience? Well, uh, it, it's similar, I guess, to what you've seen with the, the most recent models that are out there now. So what we call in our, in our portfolio the, the smaller model launch coaster, Space Warp, and then the left coaster. In the line of those designs, where we try to create a, a mix of different elements, if you will, airtime elements, corkscrews, loops, something like that. Um, that's what you can expect with these rides too. And on a slightly larger scale again, where we're, we're stepping up that game like slowly, Trying to learn from whatever model that we, we put out there and um, yeah, take it step by step. One of the inspirations for this ride, and actually just that element maybe, was the Hulk coaster, which has been around for, for many years, of course. But I really want to do a launch coaster where you don't just shoot up a high spike or maybe into a loop, but do a roll straight after the launch. Now, for this particular project, there were some constraints and I, we couldn't do an inclined launch. Um, and I don't want to mimic exactly what I've, what I've experienced. So I went from that and uh, also the side constraints were such that I couldn't stretch out all those elements. So I was thinking, how can I do something similar, shoot my train into a roll element without extending all the way into the park for this, this particular installation? And that's where the idea came up. What if I do a roll element that sort of, in plan view, circles back on where I came from? Well, that brought another issue, if you will, with it because I'm now turning on my exit instead of going in a straight line. So I had to shift the, the apex of the roll element. So you, you feel uh, a zero gravity element as you roll going up, but you're straight up going over an airtime hill, diving back down. So I can do that curve, that pull out, back to where I came from. Oh, so it's an, it's an organic process. How can I do something similar to what I really like, but work with all the constraints that I have for this particular ride? Oh.